Hey everyone and welcome to the very first Ask Rich New Heights show. My name is Lauren Early and I'm a former six time World Irish Dance Champion who is now devoted to helping every dancer achieve big dreams of their own. On each episode, we will bring you the best questions to help you discover and unlock your full potential so that you can benefit in every possible way. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the show. So for the first show, since you guys sent us in hundreds of emails and messages every month, what we've decided to do is do a Reach New Heights weekly show where we gather all of your questions that you've sent in to us and answer them on here. So that means that everybody at home, we can all learn together and we can also benefit. Yeah, also what we're going to try and do is as the weeks progress, what we'll do is actually do a live call-in or a live chat so that people can actually come on and ask questions live. Okay, obviously we have so many questions to get through already, but what we will do is as the weeks progress, we can actually do an entry into the show, which means you can come on and ask your question live. And this will be done via a reward for competitions or will be certain ways to get you guys on board. So get your questions together, save them up. We'll go through previous questions that we've been asked until now and as we go forward, we will actually spend time asking live ones and Lauren can give you a call. You'll be on the show and we can actually talk about what your live question is. These questions are gonna benefit so many people. The questions that we'll read out, we answer there probably on a handful of 10 or 15 questions that the same people are asking all the time. It's yeah. just a different version of these questions. So the good thing about this show is that when we get it out there, everybody's gonna be able to get something from the show because if you're not asking it, you're probably still thinking it. Okay? So Lauren, do you wanna kick it off? Okay guys, so question number one. Okay guys, so question number one from Denise. And it is apparent. Hi Lauren, my daughter qualified for words this year as she did last year but didn't recall. Can you give me advice on how to notice, get a child noticed um, who is not actually known? And um, this is a really good question. Um, I get this a lot from parents especially. Mm -hmm. um, it's touchy as well because there is hundreds of dancers in every competition and then we have the top dancers and then the middle half and the bottom half. Straight away, us as the audience and judges, we look at who's going to catch our eyes first off as soon as they walk on stage. So for example, you need to make sure that you're looking part for the stage. So you have your lovely dress, your makeup on point, you have clean white socks on, your legs are tanned and match your face. And that means you're looking flawless and also um, at a very high level. And um, when you're walking on stage, you have to walk on like you own it. So you have to walk on completely different. You're not walking down um, to the shop, you're going on stage to perform. So a really great tip that I go over our workshop kids is to make sure that the shoulder blades are completely squeezed back. So you're having that, that um, contraction of the shoulders, your chin is up and your nose is in the air and you're walking on very strongly. Um, and straight away, we're going to be looking at you while the others may have a timid walk on. Um, and that's that's the reaction straight away that we get from you guys walking on freshly because the judges are going to look at well, okay, who's looking confident? You need to look confident from the get go, and um, that's so important. Another thing is, um, of course, everybody is going to um, be working so hard in school with their teachers, and you'll know your steps down to a T. It's showing off movements. So, for example, normally our patterns go in the same direction, and we have three girls in a corner at the front. If we're in the corner, you need to make sure you're bracing your core and your chin and your nose up is in the air and you're showing off your movements, maybe using your hips a bit more and keeping your shoulders straight. Rather than doing a basic movement that maybe some other dancers may be doing, but you can jazz yours up by having a little bit of more attitude. I, I was always told by my teacher, make sure you're going on to perform, put on a performance. Um, so having that and obviously doing all your fitness and your strength work that you want to stand out straight away in your last step while a lot of girls are struggling and trailing their legs they keep going towards the end so straight away that child is going to stand out you're looking the part you're walking on like a world champion and um, and you're showing off movements for us to keep looking at you and having to watch you back through right? so um denise i hope that answers your question um, i think uh, as an outsider, as a strength coach, when I came into Irish dancing, I didn't actually know anything about Irish dancing. Even though I'm from Northern Ireland, I had no background in it. 
And so when I trained Lawrence, he was my first exposure to Irish dancing. Like going into a sport where you maybe see 100 people dancing time after time after time. And I'm trying to analyze the sport and trying to see what the differences are. And I mean, for me, it was very hard to see the technical differences immediately. But one thing that you can notice as an outsider is someone's attitude and confidence walking on stage. Um, yeah. Not always, but usually it is a direct reflection of the performance of what's about to come. So if someone's walking on and they're timid, generally it's a, it's a reflection of what is about to come. Not always, but that's how I've seen it when I come into the sport is that I can pick out the people that are confident straight away without even knowing anything about the sport. And for me, if I'm watching 100 people back to back in a sport where I didn't really have any interest in at the time or know anything about, I was only drawn to the people that excited me and I wasn't watching everyone back to back. So I can see from a judge's perspective how they could actually uh, not be drawn to that person if you don't do something that makes you stand out. So um, those little tips on a daily confidence and walk on and stuff, it certainly made me watch Lauren and when I'm at competitions, they draw me to other dancers. But then of course you gotta back it up with the real meat, which is gonna be your training and your performance to blow someone away, yeah. which is of course what we'll, we'll hopefully talk about in further questions. Yep, okay. So moving on to question two, and this question is from a girl called Sonia. And a Facebook question or an Instagram question? This is an Instagram okay. question. So this is a dancer, and um, she messaged me saying, Hey Lauren, I have a face tomorrow and struggle with stamina. Do you have any tips on being prepared for this before you go on stage? Hmm. Robert, I'm going to hand this question over okay. to you because she's obviously dancing the very next day. Okay, so here's the thing, right? The the thing that you have with Irish dancing is that you're generally a reactive sport, so you will react to to a situation rather than be proactive to it. So you'll know that a competition's coming up, and generally at the end, people start scrambling to do things. So they'll be doing extra classes, extra days, longer classes, more volume. So the, the volume of everything increases coming into the competition, and it's generally panic mode, right? Um, so people are asking questions, a typical example of someone asking how to improve their stamina the day before. Now we've probably never been asked the day before, what we have been asked uh, a week before, two weeks before, three yeah. weeks before. Yeah. Guys, you gotta understand, um, at that point, the hard work should be done. So, is there a way to improve your stamina the night before? It's way too late. Can you improve it four weeks before or three weeks before? Yes, you can. But by that stage, you should already be thinking about everything else. You should already be thinking about your speed, your power, your sharpness, your strength. Because if you're thinking about stamina at that stage, stamina is, is general aerobic fitness, right? It's, it's, it's determining how fit someone is. Mm -hmm. But if you're working on your stamina, which is your ability to last for longer, it's always gonna take away from your speed and your power and your sharpness. So the whole idea of training is that you work on different aspects of your dance and then come competition day, you, you click it all together. Yeah. So if you're working on your stamina right before competition, that should have already been ticked off months ago. You maintain that stamina while you're then trying to speed everything up because remember, stamina is not fast. So this is where we get these dancers on stage that they can last for a very long period of time, but there's no excitement, there's no speed, there's no sharpness, there's no aggression. And if you remember uh, a post we done a while back, was always at the point of that the top guys on stage could all already dance. I can see this and I know nothing about dancing. There's nothing that separates, very little that separates those top guys on stage because they can all dance. So it's not the dance movements, it's not the dance in itself, but it's how fast, sharp, powerful the movements are being executed. From start to finish. So if you remember my video during the week, are you working on your dance fitness or are you working on your execution? Because they're two different things. You can be getting fit in terms of trying to last for longer, but that's not working on your execution. That's not working on your speed, your partner's sharpness. So if you're coming into a competition, you want to make sure that your dance fitness is covered off and then you're working on your execution. Because like I said in a previous video, your mind, your brain will always remember the last movement patterns that you've done. So you don't want to be going into a competition working on stamina because the problem there is you're going to have to go to failure. If you want to get fitter, you have to go beyond failure to get fitter. If you're going beyond failure to get fitter, you're going to be dancing with sloppy technique because it's beyond failure. Now, you want to make sure that you're not dancing beyond failure. So you want to make sure that everything is sharp and crisp and you're working on the execution of the dance. So that is why all the stamina work is done beforehand so we can work on the execution coming into the dance. Okay, great. Okay, 
Robert, you're going to get flooded with loads of training questions, okay? Here's another really great one. Um, this is also on Instagram. It is from a guy called Daniel. Hi, Norm. I hope you're well. I'm a strength and conditioner coach, and I'm currently working with a young Irish dancer who is competing in the words in April. Is there any advice that you could give me in OK areas which are important to work on over the next three months or so? So, so far we have done some posterior chain strength and power work, some core work and some energy system development. Thanks, Dan. OK. Um, so that's all, that's all okay. OK, I'll keep this short because this is from a... Another strength and coach. strength coach is asking me a question. So there's probably not very many strength coaches that are going to be watching this show. Um, what I would say, however, is it's excellent that other coaches are getting in touch to ask questions because I know a lot of dancers now are hiring trainers and they're trying to go down this route. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you hire a, a personal trainer, they're generally trained to deal with the general public. So when we're trying to work with dancers, it's not only are they trying to then have to upscale to work with an athlete, but they're working with an athlete that's in a very uh, niche sport, such as dancing, which requires you to understand the sport and required me and I'm still studying the sport. It's required me the last six years of studying the sport to fully understand it. So it's great, Daniel, thank you for getting in touch if you're watching, it's great that you are doing this. What I'll do is answer that separately because I think it's more relevant to uh, coaches mm -hmm. and then we can just keep it generalized for everybody else. But yeah. it's good to see. Okay, so next question is from a dancer called Ava. And she's messaged me on Instagram and says, Hi Lauren, I'm reading your book right now and I love it. I'm on chapter two and I see that you're supposed to write down what your purpose in life is. What do you mean by that exactly at the age of 13? I have no idea what my purpose in life is or how to find it help. So she's 13. Um, so Ava, because you're 13 and how we wrote it in the book is you're not meant to know what your purpose in life is, okay? But you're just meant to believe in it. You're meant to believe and you're meant to commit each and every day to working as hard as you can doing what you love. And that's given every commitment to that. And if you give full commitment of what you love doing and it doesn't turn out the way you want to, you still have adapted and learned so many skills in life through that. So it doesn't, it's not about the winning, it's about the journey and how you become a person in this journey. So I, I, hope that, I hope that answers it in depth. Yeah. Um, you, you know, just asking about purpose. Guys, it's not about, it's not about winning, but you, you imagine the, the tools and the skills that you learn, yeah. even trying to become a world champion. When you're a world champion, you're already there. The skills that you pick up when you're a champion, are very very little compared to the skill that you pick up trying to become one trying to become good at anything will always require sacrifice so you're gonna have to sacrifice a lot you're gonna have to be very very strict with yourself you're gonna have to understand accountability sustainability so you're gonna have to knuckle down and dig deep which means at all these other stages whenever life's gonna hit you hard when it comes to getting jobs going to college or whatever it is you know how to dig down and get that from yourself. So these are skills that you can apply at any stage of your life. So yeah. your purpose in life, it doesn't have to be a specific thing, but it can be to be the best version of yourself. That in itself is a purpose in life. And so you, as Lauren said, you don't have to understand what the exact thing is. Like if you don't know what your job is going to be, but you might still know that your job is going to give you so much satisfaction or you want to help people or you want to, so you understand where you want to go, just don't understand what that thing might actually be at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where I was as a young child growing up. Um, I just knew I had to believe in what I wanted and what I enjoy doing. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next question. Yeah. I hope that answers it really good. Um, the next one is actually from an uh, adult dancer and her name is Martina. She says, Hi Lauren, I went back to dancing three years ago for adults and they ended up with a right foot injury and then led to both knees. I was also told it was plantar fasciitis. Yeah. Yep. I have spent a lot of money on chiropractors and physical therapy and no one can fix it. Um, I went to the doctor consultant and he said just the rest. I've rested for two years now and missed the dancing. Okay. Um, main thing is, you know, I'll go into detail here, um, that 
she is heartbroken she just wants to get back to dancing and she can't exercise or put weight on it and she's getting really upset if you can it would be gratefully appreciated if you can help her in some sort of way we can help her and that's obviously going to be okay too. okay plantar fasciitis server's disease shin splints lower leg injuries let's have a look at these as a general category so this girl what's her name martina, martina. martina. this girl martina has went to try and get help and she's been told to rest and it's been going on for two years and she's still yeah she's still no back no further on okay we have to understand is this when someone tells you to rest i'm not saying they don't mean it but it's not the solution to the problem if someone tells you to rest and come back and we'll fix that's okay if someone tells you to rest and that's going to fix the problem it won't because it's like giving someone a painkiller to fix the pain but if you're going to go out and hurt yourself again, the pain is going to come back. So you're not actually finding the root cause of the problem. What you're just doing is telling someone to rest until that injury in your body tries to heal itself. But it's not that injury happened from something. Remember, Aries dancing isn't an impact sport. So we're not, there, there's no impact. There's not someone tackling you. You're not running into anything. So what you have to understand is that any injuries caused are generally caused by ourselves. Now, you must look at what these, what these issues are. It's it's an impact injury, okay? So the only impact that we're creating is the impact on the floor. And this is the issue. All these issues come from impact and alignment. It's gonna be one of the two. So you may go to someone and take your rest, that's fine, but if you're gonna go back and dance again and you still have too much impact, then there's the problem. Now, one of the main problems is that these issues don't happen overnight. So they're small little micro tears that develop in the fascia or the tissue and slowly through time, they build up a lot of inflammation and swelling until it results in too much pain that we can't walk. So for sure, A is gonna reduce that inflammation, but it's not gonna reduce the impact because if you've never been taught how to actually absorb impact properly, then it's, it's never gonna be a skill that you're just gonna pick up after resting, you with me? So what you have to understand is that A, of course you need to rest, B, you need to understand how to absorb impact. These are uh, plantar fasciitis, the plantar fascia, and all these things are shock absorbers that your body has built in to protect the joints and the arches and so on. Now, if you're hammering away at it every single day, of course, that's going to be a problem. Too much pressure on your heels. So one of the issues is, not, is going to be not being able to absorb force properly. How do you test that? Very simple. Put out a line, put out a piece of string or a rope, start doing little hops over it, and you can listen. You can hear yourself landing. When we test this in some of our workshops, we can immediately hear people. They're landing like elephants. Mm -hmm. There's no absorption at all. One of the first things that you would do with a boxer before you even look at their hands is going to be to teach them how to absorb force. So they can, if you ever listen to a boxer skipping, you can hear nothing. One of the reasons why I don't like dancers skipping is because they just land so heavy. Okay, so rule number one is always to teach yourself to absorb force and use that shock absorption. Rule number two, you always have to look at uh, body weight. So if you have too much excess body fat, of course, that's gonna be more load. Rule number three is always gonna to be to look at the strength of the hips. So this would carry across into some other people's questions where they say around and um, they're flat on their feet. They, they can't get up, up. Their toes. they can't pull up high and so on. The only way you can get up higher is by lifting your hips up. It's physically impossible for, your, for you to get up on your toe without your hips lifting up, okay? So this lift that everyone's talking about, it comes from the hip, it doesn't come from the feet. As soon as those hips sink, there's no chance that you're ever going to get up on the toe, right? So what we have to understand is then the weakness of the hips. If someone's taken off and they're landing, but they don't have the support in the hip girdle, they're going to come down. Okay, so this creates a super compensation and the hips drop to try and absorb force. If your hips didn't drop, it's too much impact on the spine, right? So your hips drop, it means everything's flattened. That's your body trying to absorb force. If you landed straight and didn't drop to absorb the force, it's too much pressure in the knees, shins, and so on. So your body's very, very smart. It doesn't curl how you dance. It always curls about protecting yourself from injury. That's it. So if you have very weak support around the hips and you're not able to stabilize that force, your body will try and land softer and it will drop everything down to dis dissipate the, the, the force around the body. And this is how we start building up the micro tears and slowly and surely through time, these problems happen. So my, my view on this will always be to as a beginner, you're taught how to dance. You're never taught to deal with the impact what comes when you know how to dance. So as someone is learning new steps, they should also be learning 
little of force absorption drills so they can get their joints used to absorbing the force. Because when you're learning steps, you're walking through them, right? When you know how to dance, you're not going through them at full speed. So these dancers need prepared for, okay, you're learning your steps now, but I know in six months time or a year, you're gonna be doing this at full speed. So as you're doing these, we're gonna spend some time doing a little footwork drills so we can absorb force. Then in a year's time, we put them both together and that dancer's now got joints that have been exposed yeah. to the force, okay? Then you know how to do it and we can go on. But there is no big basic training at the very start and that's fine, it's not, a, it was never anyone to teach any teacher that. Not something that people should automatically know but hopefully through, as time goes by, we'll be able to put more information out about this. Mm -hmm. um, so I know loads of people have these injuries with uh, plantar fasciitis, foot injuries and so on. Always, always, always look at how much force you're absorbing, check your body weight and always look at the strength of the hips to lift everything up. And when you've got those three things nailed down, you should be a really good uh, road in to fixing a lot of those issues. Yeah. Hope that helps. Okay. As long. Great. Right, so that, Rooms okay. All the main questions. Yep, that's so enough that's questions it. for today, guys. Yep. Um, what we will, what I want to do in these episodes is actually finish with a question for you guys. So something that's current, or something that we feel we want to ask you to get you thinking. Remember, a lot of this is about getting users to understand uh, the sport, what's required, but also where it's heading. We put a post out about this a few uh, weeks ago. Everyone in other sports are always thinking about where the trend is going. Sprinters are always looking at the latest technology and where is that going? So they can always get that little bit of an edge over their competitors. Um, and so we want to get you thinking about that. So Lauren, if you want to ask the first question on the first yes. show. Yes, so this is for everybody out there. So dancing has changed a lot in like 60 years, right? And it's still changing. Um, my question to you guys is, where do you actually see our sport in like four to five years? What do you think is going to change? What's what's the main things? Um, so that that's my question to you guys, mm -hmm. and I want to hear everyone's answers on this. Just what what maybe what people will be looking for. So for example, we said previously that um, you know years ago it was more of an aerobic based hobby, you and now like it's legs, now it's very much about higher range of motion greater speed, greater sharpness yeah. or whatever. Um, so why the sport is moving, it's changed and it's it's gonna be moving even quicker. Now, it's still not moving as fast as all the other sports. And this is because- Yeah, we're still behind. You're still very behind, okay? So we're trying to update everything. So we wanna know where you see it. Yeah. And hopefully it will get you all thinking about, well, what type of training you need to do? If that's where it's gonna be in four or five years, this is where our type of training needs to go. And you get there, before everyone else is there. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. Yes, Let's join us you. on the next episode of Ask Rich New Heights.